Hey guys, good to be back here in the uh, Amy Lodge in Pittsfield, sure Vermont. Is, Johnny. Sure is, Sephra. Um, so uh, I just wanted to introduce Sephra on the far side. Uh, Thank Sephra, you. <laughs> and you introduce. This is not the dark side. You introduce the person to your right. Um, the person to my right is your lovely wife. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot her already. <laughs> the person to my front is Maid Marion. And to my left, I have the one, the only Colonel Nye. And who do you have? Do you I have? have the lovely Dr. Del Grismo. And who? UK. <laughs> and of course, I have the wonderful Dr. Johnny Waite. That's right, the honorary Dr. Johnny Waite. <laughs> Um, Who are we talking to today? Well, yeah, it's funny. This is a guy that I actually met when we were on the uh, Spartan cruise in the Bahamas, oh, no. Charlie Engel. And I'd read a couple of stories about Charlie, and I'd never met him in person. And he's done some incredible things. Um, but meeting him in person was really interesting. Very gregarious, um, engaging guy. And um, so I'm curious to see this interview. Because like I say, I've, I've read about him, I know about him, and it was neat to meet him in person. So let's see what he had to say. Head to the ship. Head to the ship. <laughs> Back at the diner with Charlie Angles is a floating diner, and um, you ran across the Sahara. That's not a mall somewhere in America, the Sahara Desert. No, it was the whole Sahara Desert even, so it was 4,600 miles, and basically I ran uh, with a couple of friends of mine, because that's what you do with friends, right? Run across a whole desert, so we ran 50 miles a day for 111 consecutive days without taking a day off, so... And the deep sand we had here at uh, Stirrup K yesterday was, was actually, nothing. I could say nothing compared. <laughs> this, was, this was very often the real deal where you were, just you know, slide, practically just like ankle deep in sand quick or, sand. you know, in 2,000 foot sand dunes that you're going up and over. And what, Did you realize quickly it was a mistake? Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, here's the thing, and I think you probably had this feeling before yourself, is uh, on about day five, I said, oh my God, I have conned about 20 people, including Matt Damon and others, into thinking this is a fantastic idea, <laughs> and we're all out here stuck in the desert, and we're going to die, and it's going to be my fault. Yeah. And you know, on day five, and up to about day 10, we, we felt like crap. Like, I literally am running that 50 miles every day, and I'm thinking, I, I can't go one more day. Yeah. And But that is when things, that is when things changed, and I had to like I had to basically, as the expedition leader, too, I had to focus everybody's mind on today. Let's just get and through today. Stop worrying about And sometimes just let's get to lunch. Right. Like, let's get up, let's have our breakfast seriously, and let's run a marathon before lunch. Then we'll take a break for a couple of hours, we'll and then we'll run the another season. marathon in the afternoon and the evening. And, and, and one day at a time, you know, again, I have to tell you, the body is outrageously resilient. It can magically come from the ashes when you're absolutely certain that there's nothing left and it adapts if you if 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 i let if i let it happen my body will adapt to whatever stress is going on now and that had been done before i mean there were people uh years ago that would have to go across with a couple of camels across the desert right absolutely absolutely i mean for really for thousands of miles the the tourigs the native people of the sahara were you know doing salt caravans with camels but most of them you know the people walked the camels carried the salt the people walked so you know in the sahara desert is is we did choose i will say the absolute longest possible route from end to end just because you know yeah, the idea yeah, was yeah. to run all the way across the sahara desert but you know it was a it was a um you couldn't do it today too politics back in 2007 when i did it were such that you know, I was able to get permission with the UN's help and other people to cross Libya, for example. Can't well, do it, can't, do, can't it do it today. Even Mali and Niger, unfortunately, there's so much, <laughs> thing, so many things going on in that part of the world with the military and with these crazy groups that are just screwing it up for everybody else. You know, that you really couldn't even go there right now. So. I don't know if we'll ever be able to again in our lifetime. I don't, I don't so. think you'd want to do it again. No, no, I don't want to. <laughs> People always ask. I'm like, yeah, I want to do something again. You probably don't that. even like looking at pictures of no. a desert. No, I still find sand. Well, you were shaking yesterday when there was, yeah. I saw when you hit the sand. You started to get flashbacks. <laughs> I still find sand and like you know cracks and crevices every <laughs> once in a while. Like, oh my god, Q-tip that's and and you're like, right, right, Sahara right. Desert. No, but it was a. I will tell you though, the other thing that came out of it, the, the legacy of it. Was 
was, again, you, you, you do things to accomplish it. So there is this thing, but I'm, I also admit, like I didn't, I didn't say, okay, I'm going to do this for clean water because that's, that's the nonprofit that I started was called H2O Africa at the time. But I actually raised six million dollars for. Uh -huh. So you know, I have a big mouth, and I think if you're if you're true to the story that you're telling, and you you can focus on the message, and people feel your passion. For whatever it is, I'll get excited. especially if it's something that it has nothing to do with me. You know, this is the everybody that deserves a clean drink of water. I don't care where you are on this world. That that should be a God given right. You know, yeah. Right. You know, there should never be a air, time where you air get, and water. Air and water. Banana you can fight for. Yeah, air well, and water. <laughs> I'm telling you. And you know, even in the United States, we're fighting over water, and that yeah. will that will continue to be as we move forward. You know, I bet 50 years from now, nobody's even talking about oil anymore. It's going to be water. And, uh, but you know that was the legacy. We got a chance to to do something really great. create a great uh, nonprofit that it actually doesn't exist. It got moved into something called Water.org, and Matt Damon and another friend of mine who was like the top guy in that space. They got together, and now they're like the biggest nonprofit yeah. out there. And I just stepped aside, and, nice. and you know, and it's great though. You know, yeah. to do something that you're passionate about, which is running for yeah. me. But also be able to do good at the same time is like that's, that's the, the dream. That's the dream right there, you know. Because I don't, I don't have to be a, I don't have to focus on that part of it. I can, I could be selfish in a way and understand that I'm. My goal is also to improve myself. You're, you're no stranger to endurance stuff. Yeah. You, um, you started in adventure racing. I did. You know, I started running marathons. You know, I got clean and sober in 1992. So that was my first, like, you know, big endurance. I, I love it with Spartan because it's all about obstacles, right? You know, and that was my first big obstacle. There, there was no greater obstacle for me than to get past that. I had great endurance in my uh, drinking and drug use, though, too. I could go for days. So, you know, but how'd but, you get clean? How'd you snap out of it? Well, it certainly wasn't that fast. You know, I went to I went to treatment. I quit. You know, I I like humor, so I like to not make it always so heavy. I'd always say quitting's easy. I've done it a hundred times. You know, because that's kind of how it works. You know, you you do the deal. You you feel like crap. You wake up that day and say, I'm never doing this again. And then. Actually, it's probably a lot like racing. And you know, you, you say, screw this, I'm done. This is the last time. And then two days later, yeah, you yeah. kind of feel better, and your and your mind forgets sure. that misery. And then you can remember the good stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I remember that, you know, that girl I met or that, you know, we had a great time that night. Sure. But finally, that was enough. It was enough. And at 29, I said, I'm done. And, you know, I went to... You know, I went to like an AA meeting every single day for a year, and I just made a decision that that, that was it. You and, found a new addiction. And I started running, and I ran 30 marathons in like the first three years. Oh, wow. As if, you know, as if that's not an addiction, you know, but but it was better and healthier. And, and then, I don't know how you figured it out, but I'm watching Discovery Channel back in like 96 and British Columbia Eco Challenge. And I see these, I see these nutcases jumping into like... 34 degree water and swimming across rivers and glaciers and, yeah. and doing all that and you know and I think there's two kinds of people there's people that look at that and go wow that's awesome but I'd never do that and then others oh, do it us who say you know I have to do that yeah. like no matter what I have to do it and so then you went around the world and went crazy yeah I did every major adventure race for five years all the you know three eco challenges three raid galois Switzerland where you and I were together British Virgin Islands and all these other races and I wasn't a I was a decent adventure racer, but that was a sport also that had a lot to do with what team you were on. Sure. You know, I was, I was, I was never going to be elite like some of those guys, but our teams did pretty well. They did well. Yeah. And, and then, you know, the last Eco Challenge in Fiji, not that adventure racing doesn't still live on today, but that was kind of like the, the swan song for that sport for me. Oh, anyway. it, was, it was awesome. That was awesome. And so I loved it. But then the next year, um, I got into like um, stage racing, the yeah. seven-day stage races, and I, I I went and I won the Gobi March, the oh, very nice. first Gobi March, and nice. 
and I figured out that with adventure racing, I'd learned how to survive, carry a pack, yep. you know, survive. I knew multiple days that I could get up and do it again, yep. and and that that kind of fit my skill set. And I'm a, and I was a decent runner, so that was more about running and not about all the other parts of it. Why don't we um, take a break, yeah. have a raw egg, yeah. a glass of water. Perfect. Right? And yeah. then we'll come back. I don't have to do burpees or anything. No burpees, raw egg, egg, water, and we'll come right back. Because right. I, I want to find Perfect. out I want to find out from those experiences how you, how you apply it to life and then how other people can learn a couple of tips on being yeah. successful because yeah. you're clearly successful. Yeah, I love it. I hope you're not sitting still while you listen. If you are, you better get a burpee break in. Pretty good water. Yeah. <laughs> That's good water, right? I mean, yeah. when you get a good cup of water, yeah. it's, it's tasty. High quality H2O. Yeah. Uh, so. I mean, you don't want to drink salt water. You don't no. want to drink dirty water. No. no. So you went to jail. And the reason that's it really interesting to me is I grew up in a neighborhood where pretty much everybody went to jail. Yeah. And when I think back, what made me enjoy cold showers or adventure racing or long distance running, I think, well, maybe as I was a kid and people would say, could you do the time? And that's, that was kind of a discussion. Yeah. Um, that's like a serious adventure race going to jail for yeah. a while. Like, how long were you in? Yeah, it was 18 months. So I gotta, 18 yeah. months? Yeah, it's a long a little, time to federal cell. prison. Yeah, it was, it was not fun. And um, can we talk about how, how you got there? Sure, sure. Yeah. You know, and it's a, I, and I always, I like to hit on the fact that, um, you know, like life isn't a guarantee to be fair. Sure. You know, it's not about fair or unfair. I mean, it basically, is. yeah, I'm, I'm the, the first person in the United States who actually went to prison for allegedly overstating their income on a home loan application. Wow. First ever. Yeah. Nice. And so, I mean, the well, biggest... That's another record. The biggest worry I had is what, what kind of tattoo I was going to get there, like a, like a fountain pen or something. <laughs> it's like, what do, you, what, do you, what do you get when you do that? You know, you don't, you don't get a knife or something. No, but it was, it was a... Uh, I mean, honestly, and in, in all seriousness, it was a devastating thing. I mean, it was as unexpected as anything possibly could By be. By the way, there were probably at least, at least a million Americans that did the same thing. Far at more. At least, yeah. yeah. Basically, if, if, if you are a person who got a mortgage between 2002 and 2007, you probably somebody your mortgage was almost certainly fraudulent. But right. it wasn't the fault of the borrower. It was, it was, it was the system. Right. But unfortunately... They needed somebody. So here's the irony. They needed somebody that could last yeah. 18 months in jail. They, well, knew, right. you, they See, knew you could I do stayed it. awake the whole time. You didn't sleep? No, I never slept. Not once. So <laughs> No, but it's a, it, it is one of these things where... Um, you know, I had to make the decision. Once once it happened, you know, and I went to trial, and I, I mean, I fought this thing, and I did, you know, a dozen appeals, and there was never any time. New York Times put me on the front page um, writing, and it was all about what a travesty it was. I mean, this was not, you know, this was I think was I not, signed a petition to keep you out. Probably. There, yeah. probably did you have the T-shirt, too? I had a T-shirt, yeah. yeah. Right. So, but it was, it was basically a... So, okay, so it's a travesty, right? It's unfair and all of that, you know, but it was going to happen. So, like, I woke up one day and it was like, okay, I'm going to prison. It doesn't matter whether it was fair or unfair or anything else. And so once I accepted that that was going to be the case, you know, interestingly, I, I really, I just wrapped my mind around it and said, you know, this is, this is a part of my life where I have a choice to either learn something from this or I can let it destroy me one of those two things and I chose to go in there I read 150 books I when I got there there wasn't uh, there were five people probably running around the little dirt track out there and when I left there were 50 you know when you know when I got there nobody had ever they laughed at me I'd go to the middle of the softball field and do yoga by myself and you know this is federal prison the guys are like you know talking a lot of crap to me and yelling you know by the time I left I had 40 guys out there doing <laughs> you know doing uh, you know doing the warrior position you know in, in a yoga class and and that that to me was fantastic but it's as I always say it's about and I think this is the Spartan style too. It's about attraction rather than promotion. Like I don't go out there and promote my lifestyle. If, if I just live my lifestyle, 
other people who are interested will say, join hey, in. how did you do that? How did you get sober? How did we're, you start we're, running? We're an average of our five best friends, right? And so you want to be a good influence. You want to have good friends. And that's, yeah. that's what you're saying, yeah. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. And you take what you can. I learned from guys in there. Yeah. And, you know, I could say I was treated unfairly, but I'd be, I'd be in the cell next to a guy who, you know, African-American who got, you know, 23 years for some... BS, you know, right. drug charge that for anybody else it should have been a, a yeah, he might have been a not a great guy. He might have really been like a dealer, but he got 23 years for something that probably should have been a year. You know, and that's I can't sit there next to him and say it's unfair. They have a guy doing races now, Ryan Ferguson did 10 years. They overturned it, said they made a mistake, wrong guy. Wow. Ten but he'd years. already done the 10 years. Already done 10 years. Yeah. And you know, and you, you you do you learn to accept those setbacks. Right. And actually, in my case, I would actually say now that you're a, uh, you're you a know, person. I'm writing a book. I mean, yeah. things are. It, it's funny. I look at things as it is. It is a whole piece. It's not just you know little chunks of life. The, the hardest part about that, quite frankly, was my kids. You know, my kids were of an age. My two boys were teenagers. And that was... They had to deal with it. It was brutal. Yeah, it was brutal. You know, you can't parent from prison. No. You know, and, you know, and again, it, it, it just is one of those things that I chose to finally just say, okay, this is the way it is. I'm going to make the best of it. Let's see what happens when I get out. And, and since I got out... Everything's, going, everything's going well. I've gotten married to a nice. fantastic woman, which, which frankly, I mean, again, that wouldn't have happened if you connect the dots... Uh, of the way life works for all of us. Yeah. So Sahara actually... You got out of jail, you were ripped. Absolutely. Right. Uh, when I got out of jail, I could actually do 500 pull-ups. See? Like, seriously. You look good. Right, not right. at once. Cleaned up, not you, got, at once, you got rest, you slept. Yeah, right? I slept 10 hours a day. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're I, well read. I, I read, and I once I got over like the vacation. anxiety of, of what I was missing... Well, that actually failed. Not to get on my soapbox about prison, but unfortunately, as taxpayers, we pay a fortune for the 94% of people who are nonviolent offenders who we put in prison because prison is a business. Do not, do not ever get confused about what it is. It's, it's, it was meant originally to punish the people we were afraid of, not just the people we didn't like. And now it's become, you know, and, and now it's become basically a business, and it's a commodity. And now, now people that now that the economy has changed in the last six or eight years, people are tired of paying for that. To have, you know, paying a fortune, hundreds of thousands of dollars, to you know, put people there when there's alternatives. You know, you can fine them or penalize them in other ways if you think they did something wrong. You know, but anyway, that's that's just that's a little uh, reform talk that I do actually am doing some advocacy work there Love and Love it. trying to help guys who, who were in that position get back out and do something with their lives. You're a pretty unique guy. You, you did all these marathons. You ran across the Sahara. You've done adventure races. You, you did 18 years, you uh, 18 months. You, you um, writing a book. Give us three tips that the average person could take away from that to just be better. Um, three tips. Okay, so, and this is certainly, again, the Spartan way. In, in fact, trying to make your life easier is a mistake. Trying to make it easier, like, yes, we should train our lives. And let's just say physically, you know, you should train for an event. And certainly you want to learn how to do the obstacles, right? And you want to learn how to do these things. But to somehow try to make it where you don't suffer is a mistake because that's my first tip. Suffering I like is, that. I like that. Suffering, suffering is, is something you should welcome. You right. should seek it. If for some reason whatever you're doing becomes so easy that you're not suffering anymore, then you need to go find a way to make it harder. You know what my thought there is, is um, 150 years ago, it would make sense that we saw it easier because yeah. our life was suffering. Sure. Today, we live in a bubble. Sure. Right? So, so you're just saying, hey, let's balance it out a bit. No doubt. Well, and, and our, all of us would say our greatest lessons that we learn are from the heart. You ask anybody, what is you, what's the thing that you've done that you've learned the most from? They're not going to say, oh, it was when I won uh, MVP of something. Sure. They're going to say it's when I broke my arm and had to sit on the bench for a whole season and I, and I had to watch That's instead of good play. Right. And so so That's suffering one. is something. Now, you know, that does it, if you don't have water in your house and you get a chance to get, you know, water, water. that suffering you it. should solve, yeah, right? right? But right. but generally speaking, okay, so that's one. Um, I think that continuous forward movement 
is is a second a, tip. A body in motion stays in motion. It is, and and to and to never, you know, the fact is, you know, the resiliency again of the human body. You think how many times have we both thought that we were done? Uh, I, mean, I think there's at least eight days left when you yeah. can't take another step. Yeah. at least eight days. Bad water, um, you, you know, doing the can't do, the, can't do anymore. No, I'm done. I, I, I am I, done. I'm I, laying on the side of the freaking right. road, and there's no way I can go another step. And then you do, yeah. and and you also learn that it is about it is about fuel. It's about certain things. You know, you can find motivation, but the the body is a machine, and if you basically treat it that it's way, it's more efficient. It's yeah. healthier. Yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah, and so and I guess that it really does kind of you know go into my third tip, which is which is really all about passion, because if you're doing you know if you're doing it for show like whatever it is okay and then granted look we love like yesterday that was my first martin race i had a freaking blast and i will freely admit that one of the things that was really important to me was not to embarrass myself so badly that you know that everybody was saying, everybody was saying i knew that guy was a schmuck you know and but 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 really though to to put yourself out there with your passion. Take a chance. Who cares if you don't succeed? I mean, really. Get out over your skis. Well, we go through life thinking that other people really care about, and I'm not saying they don't care about us, yeah. but as racers in particular, we we care we make more a about. Bigger, we make a bigger deal yeah, about we it. We care than about how, more how we finish or how we do than other people do. It's human nature. Make it about the process. Yeah, so the, the, when you're doing anything, it should be about a combination of, of, of passion and of, you know, doing good. You know, you, you're a great example here. You have a chance to, you know, you have a great business, you have all of this, and you get people passionate about fitness, but then you have this, this way of, you know, creating good along with that in ways that then improve the world for the guys who are winning these races and the people who, you know, come in last. Yeah. Quite frankly, and I think that's the that again is the that's the example of a good model of something that it actually can you know can work can for do everybody. Well, you can do well and be a business at the same time. Yeah, not just the elite. You're awesome. So, thank good you, stuff. brother. All right, thanks for having me. I here. think we should go for a swim. Yeah. Well, I I think if we get across the if the tenders can't make it, we can. Then we can. <laughs> Let's go, Dale. Well, that You're was, that was a, a brutally honest interview from him. I thought I liked the fact that he was quite honest about going from addiction to addiction with his struggle from alcohol to now uh, rehab, running... Rehabs for quitters, yeah. right? <laughs> He's yeah. quit a hundred times. <laughs> He's quit a hundred times, quit 100 that's 100 what he times. says, and then goes on to run how many? A hundred thousand miles? Eight, eight, five? What, oh, when we, we only ran through the Sahara? Yeah. I was like, 55 miles a day for 111, 111 days. days. Wow. thought he was going to die between days five and ten, rises from the ashes. I mean... That's so aggressive. Even running a marathon, but when you're in insane heat and uh, sand, I, and sand, you but guys. It's just remarkable why anybody could sustain that kind of punishment or that kind of pounding. Right? You know, to think what what the body can sustain. Uh, well, that's something we see again and again in, in these interviews, where a theme really seems to be that we think we know how far we can go, right. and you can almost always go farther. Yeah. And here's a guy who obviously has taken that to a pretty yeah, because Brutal again, well, I'm talking about a body taking the punishment, so that's a physical body, but to be able to do that, that's will. But he talks about right. continuous forward movement, doesn't he? Just yeah. like keep one foot in front of the other, just keep right. going. Which again is a, a reoccurring theme, right? I mean, but it, it's one thing to talk about it in theory and long term planning, those kinds of things. When you're talking about an actual physical event, if you're talking about running 100 miles or 55, 56 miles, whatever, a day for 100 days. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's so far beyond my ability to even comprehend. Well, that's why, I mean, that's why, um, you know, Joe has some great pearls of wisdom. Hey, Joe, by the way. Um, <laughs> hey, Joe. Hey, he's Joe. He's got a... Uh, <laughs> Don't forget you know, the boss. He, he, I, I love when he says, you know, when someone's quitting, he's like, that guy's got at least eight more days in him. You know what I mean? And then... And then they're talking about, like, you look at the Tories, you look at the nomadic people that had to traverse salt across those deserts because without refrigeration, you needed salt for preservation for um, about 14,000 different uses. It's only rock that animals and humans eat and eat. And anyways, I was a salt farmer, so I'm obsessed with salt, but I digress. In there's, camel there's, milk, we already did that last. salt and rock cocaine. Camel yeah. milk is the best for you. Anyone, it's, it's often in the, in the autism community. You just have um, to be careful trying to get it out of there because they, they can kick those camels. Camels? <laughs> 
Look into the health benefits of camel milk. Kick like I'm just saying. Mule. But anyways, no, I think it's interesting what they said. Look, the, the camels carried the salt. The people walked. So, yeah, we're like, how I can't fathom it. But those were the old trade routes. So, like, it's just a different frame of reference baseline that we work off of now, right? So Has anybody actually seen the film of his run across the Sahara? I have. Did they actually get Matt Damon out there? Uh, no, Matt Damon did not run. Uh, a good friend of mine did, though. Ray Zahab was one of the other runners. I know Ray's very well. And um, a pretty extraordinary achievement those guys had. It's a great film. It's called Running the Sahara. Right. I, I know uh, Charlie and, um, and Ray are both in it. I cannot remember the, the Chinese fellow's name, but three incredible athletes that, uh, that did that. Um, Interesting to hear him talk about um, his water project and that he's taking this... Uh, Probably got real thirsty in the Sahara. <laughs> well, but, but, but again, we talk about you know, addiction to addiction to um, sort of compulsion, right? And the thing is, people who achieve incredible things generally are driven beyond where other people are. And sometimes that takes its form in addiction. Sometimes it takes its form in athletic achievement. But you can transfer that same energy over into taking on a huge project that most people wouldn't take on um, and, uh, and getting big things done. Perhaps, as he says, through some interesting channels, but uh, but he got it done. Yeah, I mean, he's and he's also brutally honest about the issue with the IRS and, and what happened there. And you can't take away from the fact he did his time, eighteen months in jail, which must be hell for a guy who is an ultra runner. Right, so that's you know. where he stopped running. God, can but, you imagine yeah. that? It must you know, be really hard to do. The thing, the thing, the thing that again we always talk about is walking your talk, right? He's not saying like, "Come on, guys, come do yoga with me out in the prison yard." He's like, "I'm just gonna be doing yoga and." Then people are like, ha ha, you know, it's like pioneer species, how force goes back into succession. The first one, it's on its own. And then, you know, the second one's his buddy. And then by the time the third one's there, oh, it's a cool thing to do. So, you know, when you're that pioneer species, um, it serves a good purpose and it takes a lot of cojones. And uh, I, I don't know if in this uh, season we're going to have uh, a glossary or not, but um, <laughs> I, think, I think we should have Sephra's glossary where she explains things like pioneer species to the layman amongst yeah, no, us. Cause I'm glad she brought it up because that's exactly what I was getting ready to say. And so thank you for that. Pioneer species would be like the mycelium running the mushroom that comes, the bugs that eat it, the birds that eat the bug, then they start pooping with the native seeds that are around. Then you're starting to get your shrubs and then your forest goes back into a healthy succession ecology as our podcast now is going back into the ecology of Beautiful. closing. <laughs> so thank you for joining us for another wonderful podcast, and we uh, will see you in our forest succession soon. If you like our message, please share Spartan Up with your friends and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you catch our show, maybe in the woods. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. Spartan.com.